Uh, thanks for the introduction, and now I'll begin. OK, um, hello, everyone. I'm Yi Han from Xi'an Zhongtong University. Today, I'm honored to present our paper, Lemon Nephi Consolidating Heterogeneous Number Functions at Line Speed. So this is a joint work with uh, National University of Singapore and New York University, Shanghai. Network appliances have largely shifted from specialized hardware, net, hardware metal boxes to virtualized network functions, which is nowadays of various types and degree numbers. This allows a single server to host several NFs and chain them together to meet some high-level requirements. For example, the user might first want to match the incoming traffic against malicious patterns by an IDS, then pick up a backend server by a load balancer, and finally rewrite the packet header by a NAT. However, and after in the real world are heterogeneous in terms of programming languages, um, execution models, and ab abstractions, making them in not interoperable. Here we use different shapes to signify this. Uh, in this chain, the IDS could be the widely used snort, the load balancer could be the maglev implementation from networks, and the NAT could be um, the famous Mazunet from Click. And in this case, for programming languages, the NFs are both in Rust and C++. And for execution model, they adopt both standalone and module design. And of course, they are of different uh, abstractions. So a natural question emerges. Um, how can heterogeneous NFs interoperations after uh, 10 years the flourish of NFE? So first of all, many of you may have already came up with a feasible solution. That is right. At the first glance, deploying NFs as virtual machines seems natural. In this case, the VM hypervisor serves as a software switch and the packets are routed across VM instances. However, virtualization approaches have inherent overhead that cannot be prevented. Let's look closer to its thread model. On the left, multiple instances are scheduled on the same core, but this will lead to contact switches when downstream NFs gain control. So this reports an overhead of 41.4% uh, from um, past literature. And on the right, instances are pinned to dedicated cores. But as packets move along the chain, downstream NFs will have to fetch packets from shared memory queues. So this would incur more in intercore traffic, which also has a significant overhead. So here we have an overhead dilemma between contact switch and intercore traffic. But the two kinds of overhead cannot be prevented at the same time. Therefore, we reach a conclusion that overhead makes virtualization approaches very hard to reach line speed. So since overhead prevents virtualization from meeting line rates, so researchers have moved to another solution, that is consolidation. Under this model, the code of all NFs are fused into one process to get better performance. Apparently, consolidation would eliminate both sides of the overhead dilemma since it runs all NFs under the same thread and the same process. However, consolidation would require huge code, code modification when working on heterogeneous NFs, and now we'll discuss about it. The first problem comes from the namespace of different NFs because they could name the variable with the same name. As in the figure, the packet buffer in NF2 and the event buffer in NF3 preparing to be written hard disk share the same name buff. This leaves the developers no choice but to check and replace every occurrence of conflicting names, which requires developing specialized tools, of course, and, de and modifying nearly every line of the NF, but still, it cannot give any you know, correctness guarantees. The second problems come from the control flow of each NF. Most NFs are implemented as an infinite loop where it receives a batch, processes it, and eventually send it out. As in the figure, ideally the control flow should go as the black arrow suggests, but they are un unavailable now and thus crossed out. The actual, um, the actual situation here is as the red concrete arrow suggests. After NF1 sends out a batch, it uh, will try to receive another batch from the NIC immediately, and, cr and this creates an infinite loop that ignore all downstream NFs. This means that the developers have to find and extract packet processing logic and rewrite it without loops. And here we come, the third problem is about 
illegal memory accesses. In the same process, each NS has full access to the entire address space, including the shared heap. This means that an NF could silently modify the states of all other NFs without even any isolation guarantee. Therefore, the developers have to find and instrument every memory access to make sure it's legal. Now, like virtualization, we also reach a conclusion that the direct consolidation forces users to make huge modification, and uh, which is often considered as very tedious and error prone. Okay, we have discussed the pros and cons of uh, the two approaches, and here is a brief recap. So under virtualization, all NFs are unified as virtual machines, which is identical, but this incurs too much performance penalty. On the other hand, under consolidation, the NFs can run fast as function calls, but the heterogeneity in their code causes too much code modification that is preventing the developers from doing it. So are we all done with heterogeneous NF interoperation? Not really. So our insight is that there is a location midway of virtualization and consolidation such that heterogeneous NF interoperation can be both fast and with minimum effort. And this is where our approach lies, and we call it Lemon. In this case, the NFs are again under unified abstractions, so they are not like uh, heterogeneous down there. Yet they are not implemented by virtualization techniques up there, optimized for uh, targeting for optimized performance. And we will see how is that possible. Here's a closer look about how our approach, or Lemon NFE, works. The abstraction we compose, or lemon, contains an NF, and multiple lemons are loaded into the same process, and therefore we are still consolidation. The lemon NFE runtime typically has one hyperworld thread and some uh, several worker threads. And besides the lemons, the main body of the worker thread is trampolines, consists of lemon scheduler and isolation enforcement modules, which will soon be discussed. The control plane elements work in Another threat, for example, the lemon loader is responsible for loading and unloading the lemon instances, performing simple interpositioning. And the migration manager is responsible for migrating the flow among instances, in, uh, whether it's inside the same machine or inter machines. So, um, due to time limits, we are not going to discuss them today, so please refer to our paper for more details. Okay, that's how Lemon NFE works from a higher look. So now we'll discuss about its implementation. Now, the most important question here is that what on earth is a Lemon? Well, Lemon is short for least modified network function. And by saying least modified, we look at the binary of unmodified NF and require them to be recompiled into shared libraries. And by doing so, together with our dependencies, we are able to load multiple, multiple NFs into the same process via dynamic linker. And the name conflicts among NFs are resolved automatically and correctly. Also, since a large body of the NFs only share a small amount of, um, of packet I.O. libraries, for example, dbdk, lab pickup, and netmap, we can redirect the interface to our customized versions, which help us find and schedule infinite loop in the inside the NF. Similarly, by replacing the native memory allocator, we can restrict the memory access to a private heap so that we can detect and prevent illegal memory accesses. OK, that is the design of a lemon, and now we'll discuss how it is implemented. So um, by default, NFs process packets in an infinite loop and directly ask the NIC for packets. And the first issue is how we manage to schedule the NF that are implemented as infinite loops. So as in the previous slide, we replace the packet I.O. interfaces to be our customized I.O. Since we don't modify the source code, there is still infinite loop uh, in the NF code, but they are now appropriately scheduled. This is done by using Rx and Tx functions as scheduling points and saving and restoring contacts in Tx functions and we'll see how it works. First, when the trampoline receives a batch of packets, it switch control to lemon one. At this time, at this time, um, the lemon one will continue to its infinite loop 
because from Rx to process and Tx functions. And uh, when it calls Tx function at this time, the customized Tx function will save the execution context and return control to the trampolines instead of continue to the loop. Next, the trampolines find and switch to the next lemon and finally send out the processed packets. Then things are different on the second batch of packets. When the trampolines try to switch to lemon one again, it will restore the context from previous iteration. Since the context is previously at the end of the loop, the control flow will continue to the loop, run another iteration, and switch to the trampolines when the Tx is called again. Here, the blue box and the red box here is a control flow for the first time and the second time, and we can see a clear difference whether their execution is re re restored from a previous iteration. And in other case, when the control flow switches to the lemons, they will only run one iteration instead, uh, and yield control instead of uh, running in the infinite loop forever. During this process, packet processing and sending happens in the trampolines, and only the trampolines can access the NIC. Next, we'll be talking about how lemon NFV prevents illegal memory accesses. As stated earlier, for isolation, the design of a lemon aims to preserve private components, such as private heap, private stack, and uh, dependencies instead of the shared ones. And this creates bounded memory region for each lemon. Obviously, access outside one's memory region is illegal. Bounded memory region is then efficiently isolated by domain switching techniques. For example, in Lemon NFV, we use Intel PQU. At the, at, in this figure, the private components of each lemon is associated with different hardware protection domains. So when the control flow is going to switch to lemon one, the trampoline will restrict the permission to only domain one. And before switching back to the trampolines, the relaxation will be relaxed so that the trampolines can run without any problems. The same procedure of relax uh, restriction and relaxation applies for uh, downstream and uh, lemons. So in this case, when a lemon tries to make illegal memory accesses, it will trigger a signal and handled by the trampolines. Um, before we jump to the evaluation section, here is a brief design takeaway for lemon NFE. For transparency and memory isolation in virtualization approaches, Lemon and NFE achieved that by carefully scheduling the lemons and hardware aided isolation techniques. For uh, high performance in consolidation approaches, Lemon and NFE approached, uh, Lemon and NFE achieved that by intra process execution, so we kind of like getting the best of both worlds. Now, in the evaluation section, we are particularly interested in two aspects. First, um, the first is the effort of Lemon NFV to consolidate heterogeneous NFs, and the second is the performance of Lemon NFV compared with state-of-the-art NFV systems. First, our experiments show that Lemon NFV consolidates five heterogeneous NFs without much effort. As in the green box, those NFs are from different framework, language, and packet I.O. As in the blue box, if the user wants to use direct consolidation, they will have to touch the huge code base of e existing NFs, which is a ten of thousands of lines of code. As in the red box, Lemon NFV only requires modifying several lines of the make rules of each NFs, without the need to even touch the source code of them. Next, we want to compare our performance with state-of-the-art solution for both virtualization and consolidation approaches. As, study, as stated earlier, virtualization approaches often subject to high overhead and consolidation is like more performant. And in this figure, we signify them by orange and light yellow bars, and uh, our approach, Lemon NFV, is a green bar. We select, we select NFV nice and fast peak as baseline from both virtualization and consolidation. And the results show that compared with NFV nice, Lemon NFV is 88% more in terms of throughput and 58% less in terms of latency. Compared with a consolidation approach, FastKick, Lemon NFV incurs a minor overhead, which is 4.1% in throughput and 4.9% uh, in latency. So this proved that Lemon NFV can consolidate NFs with minor overhead. Finally, we want to briefly summarize our work. 
Our work stems from the observation that heterogeneous NF interoperation has two uh, direct solutions, and here is their execution models. But um, those solutions cannot be used due to the high overhead of virtualization and the efforts of code modification. Lemonov, we managed to consolidate NF with a minor overhead and effort because they find the common points existing in heterogeneous NFs and design a unique abstraction called Lemon. This enables Lemon NFV to schedule and isolate NF instances inside the same process. So uh, this is the end of our presentation. We have left out many interesting implementation details in this talk, so please read our paper for more details. And thank you, and now I'm open for questions. Thank you.